stepping up to the stage. We've got Gact taking on Belt Buckle. Uh, I don't know where Belt Buckle is from, but I do know that they play Game & Watch as evidenced by what is on our screen right yeah. now. So we're going to get to see a little bit of Ness Game & Watch action. Pretty famously a solid matchup for Game & Watch, but Gact is a different He's beast. so good. Um, I had the pleasure of watching him here at Xanadu Tuesday when he took it over one of his Japanese brethren. And he is just such a phenomenal player. Has all of the tech of, that you expect from a top level Ness, but the decision making can match. And it's so enjoyable to watch. Interestingly though, these guys are actually like dancing around each other quite a bit. Nobody's had that like that critical combo starter hit. Gak's gotten a couple of those fares in, but nothing yet. Well, now he's getting these uh, the up air into the fair, but not too much damage. And that's not something that I'm used to seeing either of these characters. Yeah, I think maybe it's just a sign of respect, of just kind of recognizing how much damage either of these characters can do. And just a false move can put you in such a deficit. And right. as Game you Watch, get, you're so light. You get grabbed once by Game & Watch, you're going to take a million up airs. Yeah. You get hit once by Ness, you're going to go on the fair train. Neither one, of these guys wants to, yeah, neither one of these guys wants to, to go through that. Because let's not forget, Game & Watch can bucket the, the up B from Ness. So He's it makes just in so special fall harder. after it, too, yeah. so he, just, he goes down. Oh, this is going to be big, and Gat taking stop number one. And I mean, it, it, it was a slow start, but it definitely started to pick up speed. And you mentioned the, the lightweight nature of Game & Watch. Ness certainly does not struggle when it comes to KO potential, so he's definitely going to be taking advantage of it with things just like that, like the PK Fire Up Smash setup. It won't kill that early on a good chunk of characters in this game, but Game & Watch, he's not so lucky when it comes to that. For sure. And there's back air, there's drag down setups from up air. Like, Ness has a lot of tools. We didn't even talk about back throw, which is really what made Ness Ness. Yeah, the strongest back throw in the game by quite some margin. But that back air is going to be Beautiful. able to chase out, so Belt Buckle still very much alive and kicking in this game. 59% is not a ton, all things considered, but Gak could KO here with the right setup, so Belt Buckle has to play very, very conservatively here, especially when he's on the ledge. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, whenever I see someone charging a smash attack, if it's not reaching, go for that get up attack, you know? Take that free 10, 12%, clear that ledge. Oh, wow. I did not expect that to kill. Unfortunately, your belt buckle is trailing an entire stop. Unfortunate DI there, and like you said, Gak picking up that without actually nice. taking all too much damage from Belt Buckle is going to mean that he has a huge lead here. And no punish on the missed up B there. You gotta be hitting those. Yeah, I mean, that is rough. Gak playing mind games even when he's free falling. Gets that drift yet again to avoid the up air setups. Ness, one of the few characters in this game that has enough air. That was beautiful. Drift. Gets the wave land into yeah. the grab as well to set him up on ledge yet again. Oh, barely gets the shield up in time. Again, uh, Gat keeps getting away with that setup. At some point, you gotta imagine Belt Buckle is gonna kind of get wind of it and find an opening. Oh, grabs the wrong way. And Gat's just swinging for the fence at this point. If you're Belt Buckle, I mean, you wanna say shield your friend, but you're so light. Ned's throws are so strong, but that up air is what was needed that time. Right, that's the thing that I think a lot of people, like, they don't really take into account when playing against Ness, because in a lot of matchups, Shield is your best friend at those higher percents, because at high percents, combo throws aren't really going to be too much of a problem, like you're not going to be hit by those low percent bread and butter throws, but against Ness, his throws do the same thing yeah. to you at every percent. They either do one thing, and that's kill, or the other thing is take away stage control, and both of those are very, very bad at that high percent. So you can't just turtle into shield. You can't just like try and find those openings by waiting for him to land on you because you're just putting yourself in disadvantage by doing so. And I think Gak knows that all too well, takes advantage of it beautifully, and takes game one in a low percent two stop. Yep. And we're going to try a different stage. Unbuckle is hoping that maybe this is, I'm sorry, belt buckle. It's hoping that maybe this is enough, but we will find out. Well, this it's is certainly a more explosive good. start than game number one. Gak carrying that momentum over from uh, from game one. Yeah. 51. That landing grab right there is so good. One thing about the Japanese players that can never be stated enough, their movement is so oh. good. And you tried to tech, it wasn't necessary, and you lost your stock. So unfortunate when a multi-hit hits you in a scenario like you that. You can never, like... Be 100% certain. It's it's either a guessing game or you have to have phenomenal reaction time to be able to yeah. know if you need to tech in those situations. And unfortunately for Belt Buckle, he's not going to get away from that one unscathed. Loses the first stock much quicker than he did in game one. You can't go for a neutral tech, which a lot of people don't really do because you're kind of teching out of panic and DIing at the same time. 
but at least out of a normal air dodge, most characters can recover. Oh, oh, okay. That was so tricky. That was almost disastrous because if he, if Gak had guessed right on the angle with the uh, the upbeat, or if Belt Buckle had jumped after the roll, which a lot of players do pretty frequently to try and pick up an advantage state, he would have been KO'd. But it's instead going to be Gak that loses that stock thanks to a phenomenally spaced F smash on the ground. And there's still some hope for Belt Buckle. I mean, you're at 109%. You almost got to play perfect, but if you can get Ness off stage, but. You can't get him off stage if you can't get your feet planted, and Gak made sure that there was no chance of Belt Buckle recovering. I'm gonna be real with you, Logic. It is cathartic to see somebody punish Game and Watch up <laughs> Uh oh. I, I I I agree with you. It does feel good. Gets that throw there. That's going to one. Like I mentioned during at the end of game one, going to claim stage control for him, but he gives it up pretty quickly. Tries to go for that extra punish off stage, but Belt Buckle has yet to regain footing. Good recovery from Belt Buckle, saying, hey, if you're gonna throw out this match attack here, let me just go above it. Avoid the scenario altogether. Gets shield up in time. Dact has been phenomenal so far. I don't think he's been grabbed yet. I would like to point out, he, I don't think Belt Buckle has gotten a single grab. Even there, he gets the grab, but Gak pops out of yeah. it. He's like, he's not actually been thrown yet, is what I should say, because Gak only uses shield when it's necessary as a defensive tool. He's not using it as like a safe haven. He's using it as a shield. As you should use it. No wasted movements being displayed from Gak. Now, if you're, if you're Bell Buckle, you desperately need to get Gak off stage. I mean, either find a down smash so you can uh, connect with the forward smash afterwards, or you gotta get Gak off stage so you can maybe go for an edge guard. It's gonna but be the back throw, puts him deep off stage. Gak is going to be looking for this edge guard, like you mentioned. Belt Buckle with the high up B actually is going to work to perfection. He's able to get yep. his feet back underneath him on the stage. Very, very well played by him. And you gotta imagine, it almost feels like Gak is about to be walking it in. Belt Buckle really gonna have to dig deep. Do something maybe uh, unorthodox if you really wanna have a shot at bringing this back versus Listen, Gak. all I'm saying, like down throw F smash to KO here and then nine hammer. Oh, no, that's gonna oh, be it. That's for next game. No, that, there is no next game. He's done. That's His a 2-0. Oh, okay, opponent. okay. <laughs> and lose bracket. Very, very well played by both players. Gak's going to be taking it out. Going to be moving on in winner's bracket. I believe that was his last match of the day, so he's qualified for day number two. Just making use of that yo-yo to punish those Game & Watch upbeats. Not going to snap to ledge fast enough to deal with that lingering hitbox, and as a result, going to be going down to losers. Yeah, he took a lot of stocks with down smash. Yeah. Sometimes with a, with a red spark, sometimes with an air dodge. Those, uh, those yo-yos... Or, I uh, guess it's a single yo-yo. He doesn't, like, change yo-yos every Smash attack. But that yo-yo was definitely putting in some work for Gact in that game number two. But yes, it does look like we have our, our next two players sitting down. And I didn't look at the the text that Devin gives us. And I was, like, thinking to myself, is that Apostle? And it is Apostle. We've got Apostle coming up next. Apostle has been warming up. Um, but Capitan Sito is such a good player. I don't know if you can...